To be completely honest with you, this project was not a complete success. At best, it's a first prototype. At worst, it's an aesthetic lump of plastic and wires. When I started this project, in my mind, it looked like this. I had an idea, and as I worked towards finishing it, expected the quality to improve. I would start with a few spare parts and finish with the functional robotic arm. Well, it didn't work out quite like that. In reality, my progress looked more like a mirrored Nike logo. Progress was broken into four stages. Most open source robotic arms have servos placed in the forearm with strings running through the wrist and palm. However, in robots, this both limits the wrist motion and space for other components in the forearm. Instead, I decided to control the fingers with servos placed inside the hand and a ball and socket style joint for the wrist. While in the process of 3D printing, the first and most generic problem is the inevitable failed prints and flawed designs. Nothing too major though. After cleaning out most of the support structure with a drill and pliers, I assembled the fingers. Because of small errors made in Fusion 360 and scaling issues, not all the black pieces fit perfectly onto the white pieces. A key problem of this being that some of the joints don't roll as smoothly as they should. Additionally, some of the holes are too small in diameter for the elastic. Unfortunately, I ran out of filament and could not print more. The fingers are contracted by pulling a fishing line. When released, the finger is pulled back by the grey elastic cord. I made two continuous rotation servos. Usually servos are limited to 180 degrees of rotation by the potentiometer. The potentiometer provides variable resistance as it's rotated. This change in resistance can be read and the angle of rotation calculated from it. To overcome the rotation limit of 180 degrees, I cut off the plastic stopper on the topmost gear and then drilled a hole in it so that it doesn't bite onto the potentiometer. This allows the gear to spin freely on the potentiometer. However, without the gear attached to the potentiometer, I can't get a reading on how much the servo has rotated. So later when I assemble the hand, you'll see me put potentiometers inside the knuckle. Due to limitations of space in the palm, I combined two of the servos to make two compact geared DC motors. I removed the potentiometer and chip, but saved them for later. Again, remove the plastic stopper, then cut the plastic case. It is important to cut it in such a way that you don't cut off this indent that holds the axle in place. Because I removed the potentiometer, the gears have no axle to spin on. As a substitute, I cut a screw to the same length. As mentioned earlier, additional potentiometers are placed in the knuckle to get a reading of the finger rotation. An issue with this that needs to be fixed in later versions is that if something blocks a segment of the finger closest to the palm while the top two segments are still free to rotate, then they will be contracted while the potentiometer reads that the finger is at rest, fully extended. The pinky doesn't get its own potentiometer because both it and the ring finger are pulled by strings attached to the same servo. Each of the servos has a black pulley that pulls a string attached to its respective finger. The pinky and ring fingers share the same pulley, while the index and middle fingers have their own. The thumb is controlled by two servos, one to contract it and one for rotation. Another design I'd considered using for the thumb joint was this one. The steps to make it are almost the exact same. Just rotate the cases when gluing. About a month and a half into this build, I began to ask, is this even worth it? Here I was with a design that was conceptually unique, but with so many fundamental flaws, it would be best to start a ground up redesign. The list is extensive, 
so I posted a document of all the issues with this prototype so that if you want, you can go through and troubleshoot yourself. Despite the problems, I decided to keep working and share it publicly because whether it's posting to Instagram or publishing research papers, there seems to be a stigma that you should hide your failures. Perhaps someone will take my designs and develop and refine them further. All the CAD files and code are posted on my GitHub with detailed instructions on Instructables. Links are in the description. The second half of the forearm failed mid-print due to the extrusion nozzle getting clogged. So I printed the rest and glued them together. Most of the soldering is connecting everything in parallel to the ground and 5 volt pins on the Arduino. In the links below you can find a complete circuit diagram.